I'm back with some Mac app recommendations. Ever since getting this MacBook Pro, I've kind of felt like a kid in a candy store, like revisiting a lot of my favorite Mac apps, but also discovering a lot of new ones. And I just want to share them with you all. I, I, if you haven't figured it out, like five years into this channel, I, I really like apps. So this video is sponsored by Setapp. Let's get into it. The first app is ShareBot. Honestly, this app shouldn't even need to exist, but in the world that we live in, I'm glad it does exist. So Shortcuts is on the Mac now. And Shortcuts on the iPhone and iPad really relies on the share sheet from taking data from an input source, whether it's Safari or whatever, taking data and passing it along into the shortcut and to another app or formatting it or whatever. But the share sheet doesn't exist for Shortcuts on the Mac. Like you can't it, it was it was honestly a huge surprise for me when I loaded up shortcuts in Mac OS and I was like, wait, where's, and I'm like messaging Matthew Castanelli. I'm like, where is this? But ShareBot, it brings the share sheet to shortcuts for Mac OS and I'm so glad it does. So the way this works is you install the application and it installs a shortcut in your shortcuts app. And basically what this does is whenever you use this, it runs a shortcut and pulls all of the shortcuts that use the share sheet. So that way you can just pick which one you want and it pulls the data from your input source. So whether it's Safari or a text editor or whatever, it pulls that and then passes it along into the shortcut that you pick. Um, it's really handy to have. It, it, if you use shortcuts on the Mac, you need to install this. It will save you so much time for having to like rebuild shortcuts to be like, okay, if this shortcut runs on the Mac, then you gotta work on this other way. No, it just works the same whether you're on the iPhone, iPad, and Mac now. Rocket is a clever way of getting emojis on the Mac. So you can do things like hit the globe key on a MacBook Pro or hit control command space and like get the emoji picker on the Mac. But what Rocket does is it allows you to just type a colon and then just start typing the emoji name. So you could type laugh or car or whatever. And as you type, it refines your search down and then you can just hit enter and it picks the emoji and just inserts it right there. So that way, if you're typing, you don't ever have to stop typing to scroll through an emoji picker or click in the little search field or something like that and then click an emoji. This is just so much faster for getting to emojis on the Mac. Cheat Sheet is one of my favorite recent discoveries. Now what Cheat Sheet does is genius. So on the iPad, when you have an app and you have a keyboard attached, you can hold down the command key and you can see a list of all the keyboard shortcuts that are available for that application on the iPad. Now there's nothing like this on the Mac. You can go through the menus and you can see the keyboard shortcuts and stuff like that. And some apps have the ability to customize keyboard shortcuts and things like that. But if you install Cheat Sheet for the Mac, what this allows you to do is in any Mac OS application, hold down the command key and it brings back all of those keyboard shortcuts for that application, just like it does on the iPad. This is just incredibly handy, especially for me, as I'm kind of balancing both worlds, like mostly working on the iPad, but also doing a lot of creative work on the Mac. This has been really helpful for learning Final Cut and Photoshop stuff again, uh, just because I, it's been so long since I've used that stuff on the Mac, I've forgotten a lot of those keyboard shortcuts. So it's been really handy to just be able to hold down that command key and be like, oh, hey, yeah, that's what I want. Cool, hit the keyboard shortcut, boom, I learned it. This video is sponsored by Setup. Apple's hardware for the last couple of years has been absolutely amazing. Between my MacBook Pro and my iPad Pro, there's nothing the hardware can't handle. But what about the software side? Well, that's time for a drastic change. Here is Setup, and the change it makes lies in the way we interact with software, bringing in even more simplicity and productivity in our everyday lives. Setup helps you solve tasks that you would normally waste a bunch of time doing, doing research for applications, downloading a bunch of trials. No, Setup is here to solve that. Let me show you how. Let's say I want to track the battery of not just my MacBook, but all my connected devices. I can just type in the search field, battery tracker. The first app that comes up is batteries. Looks like it's exactly what we want it to do. With one click, it's downloading and installing. So my task has been solved in under a minute. I didn't have to do a bunch of research. I didn't have to install a bunch of trial apps or give my credit card out to applications that don't offer a trial or anything like that. Just I typed in what I wanted to do in the search field and set up and it came back with results. By using multiple apps, I can literally revamp my entire workflow as the apps contribute to a common goal like productivity, task management, and many more. 
With more and more premium features and apps being added to Setup all the time, Setup can really help you up your productivity and workflow game. Think tasks, not apps, with Setup. Check out the link in the description below to get a seven day free trial. CleanShot X has completely replaced the way I do screenshotting and screen recording on my Mac. I've been doing a lot more of uh, screen recordings and things like that for the channel recently. By default on the Mac, you can hit Command Shift 3 or Command Shift 4 to take a screenshot. And you can also use QuickTime to do screen recordings. But they're a little finicky. It's not the easiest process. But CleanShot X has some really awesome customizations that makes this workflow, whether you're doing uh, screenshotting or screen recording, really simple. So first, I turned off all the native screenshot shortcuts. What I did is I set those shortcuts up in CleanShot X. That way it doesn't break any muscle memory. What I love about this is when you take a screenshot, it appears in the bottom left corner. If you messed up something, you can just quickly delete the screenshot or you can save it or copy it and just send it in a message or paste it wherever you want. It's just a lot faster than the built-in screenshot tool. There's also a built-in annotation tool for editing screenshots as well. But what set me over to just completely be converted to CleanShot X is the screen recording feature. So what I did is I set up a keyboard shortcut, Command Shift 5, to start screen recording. You could pick a section of the screen or you could just hit the enter button and I'll record the whole display. When I'm done, I just hit Command Shift 5 again, and it will save a copy of that screen recording to a temp folder I have. This is just so much faster than QuickTime. I absolutely love this application. CleanShot X is also available on today's sponsor, Setapp. I've mentioned this next one before, but it just got a major update, so I wanted to quickly go over what's new because it is a big update, and that's AirBuddy. AirBuddy is an application that brings quick connect support for AirPods to the Mac. It's an application I absolutely love and I use every single day to pair my AirPods Max with my MacBook Pro. But now it supports non-Apple headphones, like the Sony headphones that have the really long name that I can never remember that everyone loves. In fact, I used to own a pair, I really do like them. But AirBuddy now works with those kinds of headphones. AirBuddy also got rebuilt a bit so that it sees AirPods faster. It sees the state of AirPods faster so it can connect even quicker. In my testing, I found this works really well. It also got support for shortcuts so you can do things like connect or disconnect devices, check battery levels, and get the state of your devices. If you've held off on using AirBuddy for some reason, give it another look. It's probably worth it if you use some kind of wireless headphones. I'm sure most people will have heard of this next app. Actually, really, it's more of a service. Uh, but there's a feature that it got, and I actually didn't know it got this, but when I was looking at it and signing up, I saw it, and I, and I jumped right on it, and that's Backblaze. For those that don't know, Backblaze is a service that backs up the files and folders on your computer, the documents, the folders you create, the important stuff. It backs it up to a cloud service, their cloud service, and that way, if something were to happen, you deleted those files, your computer crashes, gets stolen, something like that, you can recover those. But the feature I didn't know Backblaze offered was up to a year of versioning for files. Now this isn't on by default. You have to pay a little extra, but it's only like an extra $2 a month at, at the time of recording this. It could change in the future. But at the time of recording this, it's only an extra $2 a month. So that's worth it for me. What this basically means is, say I delete a file in January and April comes around and I'm like, oh, I deleted that file and I still need it. Oh no, I can go into Backblaze and recover it. But versioning isn't just for deleting files. It's also getting old files. So say I make a change to a really important document. I delete a bunch of cells out of a spreadsheet or something like that thinking, oh, I no longer need these. Couple months down the road, oh no, I did need those. I can go into Backblaze and pull the old version of that document. Just such a handy feature. I pay less than $100 a year. So less than $100 a year, I'm able to back up my entire MacBook Pro, all the data on it, there's no data cap, and I have a year of versioning for under $100. I don't know how they're making money off me. I don't think they are, because I'm already backing up like 600 gigs, and I've only had this MacBook Pro for like two months. XSearch is a Safari extension I've talked about in the context of the iPad a lot, uh, but it's also on the Mac. Now, for those that don't know, what XSearch does is really cool. 
So in Safari, you can type a shortcut like YT and then type out something you would search for on YouTube. So like what's on my iPad. So you could type out YT, what's on my iPad, hit enter and it'll search YouTube right from the search box in Safari for what's on my iPad. Such a handy utility. Now, this isn't just for YouTube. You can set this up to work with Amazon, Twitter, IMDb. There's so many websites it supports. In fact, there's a whole gallery built into the app that you can quickly just add support for different websites and it'll trigger those. And then you can customize the shortcut if you want them to be something else. It's just a really nice extension. In my search to find the perfect monitor that doesn't cost $6,000, I am now trying the LG 5K 2K. Uh, Sarah Dietschy, friend of the channel, has talked about it in the past. It piqued my interest. Also, my pal Noah Herman got one, and he really liked one. Uh, it was on sale after Christmas, and I was like, you know... Let's try it. I, I want to try the ultra wide monitor. I actually had one at a day job a long time ago and I used to plug my iPad into it. It was hilarious. Uh, but <laughs> that that's besides the point. Um, but I was like, okay, let's give it a shot. Now that I'm editing video on the Mac again, let, let's try it. It's, it's, a, it's a fine monitor. It's an okay monitor, but it's not without its quirks. And one of those quirks is you can't control the brightness or the volume from Mac OS. Not, not just the keyboard shortcuts on the keyboard, but even if you go into like control panel, you can't change any of the sliders. So this is where the next app comes in. This is Display Buddy. Display Buddy should, I don't know what it's doing different from Mac OS, but it should just be built into Mac OS because I'm able to control the brightness and the volume of this monitor where Mac OS can't. It just lives in the menu bar, I can click it and move the slider. And it is actually controlling the volume on the monitor. I can go into the monitor settings and see it change as I move the slider. Now the speakers on this monitor aren't great. I'm not advocating to use those speakers for anything, especially like audio production or anything like that. But sometimes it's nice to just be able to watch something really quickly and I just use the monitor speakers because that's what's convenient at the time rather than busting out headphones. Display Buddy is also available on Setapp. So that's it. Let me know what your favorite Mac app is in the comments below, what I should check out. My thanks to Setapp for sponsoring this video. Remember, you can get a seven day free trial by using the link in the description below. Links will also be to all the apps that I talked about in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.